This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. And I'm Narmeen Sheikh. Welcome to our listeners and viewers around the country and around the world. As the 72-hour ceasefire in Gaza enters its second day, Palestinian officials have been meeting with prosecutors at the International Criminal Court to push for a probe of alleged war crimes committed by Israel during the 29-day offensive that left nearly 1,900 Palestinians dead. On Tuesday, Palestinian Foreign Minister Riyad al-Malki said his administration was making efforts to have Palestine become a member of the ICC, a legal step that would grant the court jurisdiction over war crimes in the territory. Well, of course, from our uh, uh, part, uh, uh, everything that you know, has happened in the last 28 days is uh, clear evidence of uh, war crimes committed by Israel that really tantamount to uh, crimes against humanity. It's not that, you know, we, uh, uh, I'm saying that as uh, a Palestinian, it was really being really said by many uh, observers, uh, international experts uh, on international law, uh, who has really described this as uh, war crimes. And as a result, you know, uh, w there is no difficulty for us to show a case or to build a case. Uh, evidences are there, just, you know, for people to see and to collect. Israel has said it attempted to avoid civilian casualties in Gaza and accused Hamas of putting its people in harm's way by launching rockets from within densely populated districts. Last month, Israel's ambassador to Washington, Ron Dermer, dismissed the charges of Israeli war crimes. He said, quote, some are shamelessly accusing Israel of genocide and would put us in the dock for war crimes. But the truth is that the Israeli Defense Forces should be given the Nobel Peace Prize, a Nobel Peace Prize for fighting with unimaginable restraint, he said. Those are the words of Israeli Ambassador Ron Dermer, speaking last month at the Christians United for Israel summit in Washington, D.C. Well, earlier this week, Human Rights Watch released a report accusing Israeli soldiers of shooting and killing fleeing civilians in Gaza. The group based its reports on interviews with seven Palestinians who fled fighting in the village of Khuza. The report was based in part on testimony from Ashraf Ibrahim al-Najjar, who was trapped in his house by shelling for three days, then shot at when he tried to leave. They were shelling us. Artillery shells and missiles while we were inside the house. We tried to get out and contact the Red Cross. No one responded. They said there was no coordination with Israeli authorities. So the shells fell down on our heads, on the building where we were staying, about 40 or 50 of us. We stayed there for three days under missiles and shelling. At the time, since there was no Israeli coordination with the Red Cross, we decided to go out at our own risk. We said, that's it. We have to leave before the house falls on us. We got out to the street. We took the mothers and the children with us. We raised up the white flag and continued walking at our own risk. We were shot at about 400 or 500 meters from our house. We were shot at. We didn't know if the shooting was by a tank or the special forces. God only knows. Ashraf Ibrahim al Ajar speaking to Human Rights Watch. For more, we're joined in Washington, D.C., by Kenneth Roth, the executive director of Human Rights Watch. We welcome you to Democracy Now! Ken, can you talk about this finding um, of Human Rights Watch in Kuza? Yeah, I mean, this was a, a truly tragic case. I mean, as your introductory segment showed, um, Kuza is a small town in the southern part of Gaza. Um, beginning on about July 21st, it was the subject of fairly relentless bombardment. Um, finally, after a couple of days, on um, July 23rd through July 25th, families slowly tried to leave Kuza for their larger city of Khan Yunus nearby, hoping to find refuge there. And as you would do in a situation like this, they raised white flags. They did everything they could to um, make clear that they were not militants. But on several different occasions, Israeli forces shot at them and actually killed some among the people who were fleeing. And so it was if, you know, they're damned if they stayed, damned if they fled, um, their lives very much in jeopardy each step of the way. Kenneth Roth, can you explain why Human Rights Watch has advised uh, uh, the Palestinians to go to the International Criminal Court uh, about these uh, uh, war crimes? What would be the advantage of doing so? 
Well, you know, despite the Israeli ambassador's claim that Israel deserves the Nobel Peace Prize for its extraordinary restraint and its extraordinary care to spare civilian lives, um, Human Rights Watch has seen from the ground, based on our investigations in Gaza, that that's anything but the case. And, and no matter how many times the Israeli military spokesmen, you know, scream, human shields, human shields, uh, most of the people being killed in Gaza are being killed because Israel is paying insufficient care to saving civilian lives. And there's been case after case in which Israel's used the wrong weaponry or has shot it at people with many civilians around. Um, and these, in our view, are war crimes. Now, um, neither Israel nor Hamas has any record of bringing its war criminals to justice. And to be fair here, we should note that, you know, Hamas is also committing war crimes by indiscriminately sending rockets into populated areas of Israel. And so given that complete impunity um, within Israel and Gaza, the only real recourse that we see is to the International Criminal Court. Now, Palestine, having now been recognized by the U.N. General Assembly as a state, actually is entitled to ratify the International Criminal Court Treaty, or even short of that, to simply invite the International Criminal Court to come in and conduct an investigation. Um, I don't quite understand what the, the Palestinian representative was doing in The Hague, because this is not just a matter of going and discussing whether maybe the International Criminal Court might get involved. You know, they should stop the charade and just invite the International Criminal Court in. It's a simple thing to do. Now, of course, the reason they're not doing it is probably twofold. I mean, one is that the U.S. government and certain Western governments governments are shamefully putting pressure on the Palestinian Authority not to do that, threatening to withhold aid and all kinds of severe consequences. And this is their effort to protect Israel from a proper war crimes investigation. The other factor which may be playing a part is, of course, Hamas's vulnerability to prosecution as well. And we don't know to what extent Hamas is telling the Palestinian Authority, you know, don't you dare really bring in the International Criminal Court, because we're at jeopardy as well. Um, but, you know, the bottom line is that this, this charade is, is not real. Um, and we hope that the Palestinian Authority will, will get off the fence and go forward and actually invite in the International Criminal Court as the only realistic prospect for bringing justice to the many, many victims of these war crimes. Okay.